Do we have Vaishnava song books? And distribute. We will, Hare Krishna, this morning we will begin, we will sing Vibha Bari Shesha, Vibha Bari Shesha by Bhaktivinoda Thakur in the Vaishnava songbook. What page is it on? Huh? Got to go to what? Pitering. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Hare Krishna. Oh. Vibha Vishesha Haloka Provesha Nidra Chari Uta Jeeva Vibha Vishesha Haloka Provesha Nidra Haloka Provesha Nidra Chari Uta Jeeva Bolo Hari Hari Mokonda Morari Rama Krishna Hari Jeeva Ravana Thakura Makhana Thakura 
गोपि जनाबाष्ट्रहा हरि Rajerala kala gopa vrinda kalo Chishari vamsi jahari Yogindra bandana srinandana nandana Rajajana bhaya hari Yogindra bandana srinandana nandana Rajajana bhaya hari Nabhinyane raja rupa mano Yashoda <laughs> Kadamba Kanana Rasa Parayana Vrinda Vipi Nani Vahati Ananda Parayana Vrindani Chaitana Kulachara Yoga Kakana Gopangana Gana Chitavi Naodana Samasa Gana Gana Dhamma Yamuna Jeevana Thele Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakora Namashura Raj Krishna Yaj Rako Vachana Manna Mohora Vibhavari Shesha Aloka Provesha Nidrata Jyota Jiva Bolo Hari Hari Mokonda Morari Rama Krishna Haya Jeeva Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo 
भगवते नारायणम नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम दैवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुधर नष्ट प्रयेशु बभद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत से भगवती उत्तम श्लोके इनवोकेशन टूद we're reading the first verse om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya jai shri apigyana swarat सदास्तकुहकमेमे ्रह्मादयादुयुरा <laughs> तेजो वारी मृदम यो यी सर्गो मृषम न स्वै न सदा निरस्त कुहक सत्यम परम दिमि जन्मादो नवयदरतु अभिज्ञना स्वरा हे ब्रह्म हृदयादिकवे मुयती यत्सुरा तेजो वारी मृदम यम यी सर्गो मृषम न स्वै न सदा नरस्त कुहक सत्यम परम धीमि anybody like to chant anyone 
Offering my obeisances, Bhagavate, unto the Personality of Godhead, Vasudevaya, unto Vasudeva, the son of Vasudev, or Lord Sri Krishna, the primeval Lord. Janma Adi, creation, sustenance and destruction, Ashya of the manifested universe, Yata from whom, Anvayat directly, Itarata 
indirectly. indirectly. Cha, Cha and Arteshu purposes Abhigna fully cognizant Swarat fully independent Tene imparted Brahma the Vedic knowledge Radha consciousness of the heart. Ya, yeah. yeah. one who, who. Adikabaye, Adi unto the original created being, Muyam, Muyati, are illusioned, illusion. yet, yet, all about whom. Suraya, three modes of cre. Oh, oh no. Ah, sorry, I lost the place. <laughs> Where is it? Uh, great sages and demigods. Teja, fire. Vani, vari, water. Mridam, earth, yata, as much as vinimaya, action, action. yatra, whereupon, trisarga, three modes of creation, creative faculties, amrisha, Almost factual. Almost factual. Damna, Damna, along with all transcendental paraphernalia. Along with all transcendental paraphernalia. Vain, Swena, Swena self sufficiently. Sada, Sada, always. always. Nirasta. Negation by absence. Negation by absence. Kuhakam, Kuhakam. Illusion. illusion. Satyam. Satyam. Truth. Truth. Param. Param. Absolute. Absolute. Dimahi. Dimahi. I, do I do meditate on. Translation. O my Lord Sri Krishna, son of Vasudev, O all-pervading personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes of the creation sustenance and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations and he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji the original living being. By him even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion as one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations 
of the material world and meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I'll read the first paragraph of the purport. Obeisances unto the personality of Godhead Vasudev directly indicate Lord Sri Krishna, who is the divine son of Vasudev and Devaki. This fact will be more explicitly explained in the text of this work. Sri Vyasadev asserts herein that Sri Krishna is the original personality of Godhead and all others are his direct or indirect plenary portions or portions of the portion. Srila Jiva Goswami has even more explicitly explained the subject matter in his Krishna Sandarbha. And Brahma, the original living being, has explained the subject of Sri Krishna substantially in his treatise named Brahma Samhita. In the Samaveda Upanishad, it is also stated that Lord Sri Krishna is the divine son of Devaki. Therefore, in this prayer, the first proposition holds that Lord Sri Krishna is a primeval Lord. And if any transcendental nomenclature is to be understood as belonging to the absolute personality of Godhead, it must be the name indicated by the word Krishna which means the all-attractive. In Bhagavad Gita, in many places, the Lord asserts himself to be the original personality of Godhead. And this is confirmed by Arjuna and also by great sages like Narad, Vyasa and many others. In the Padma Purana, it is also stated that out of the that out of out of the innumerable names of the Lord, the name of Krishna is the principal one. Vasudev indicates the plenary portion of the personality of Godhead. And all the different forms of the Lord being identical with Vasudev are indicated in this text. The, the name Vasudev particularly indicates the divine son of Vasudev. The divine son of Vasudev and Devaki. Sri Krishna is always meditated upon by the Paramahamsas who are the perfection, the perfected ones amongst those in the theoretical or amongst those in the renounced order of life. Oma Jnana Timaranda Syakyananjana Shalakaya Chaksura Militanyana Tasmai Shri Gurave Vancha kaupa terubhyas cha kripa sindhu vaeva cha patitanam pavani bhyo vaishnavi bhyo namo nama jai shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri advaita gadadhar shri vasadi gaur vaktavanda hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 so this is the introductory verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam and Srila Vyasadeva is giving us a description of Lord Krishna. One time Prabhupada came to Dallas, Texas 
And at that time, we had the Gurukula there in Dallas, Texas. And there were young children there. All the young children, the, the children of the devotees had been sent there to study for their education. So Prabhupada came there and he was giving class in the morning. And when we chanted the verse, you know, of course, before class we said, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So Srila Prabhupada asked all the children, what is the meaning? <laughs> Prabhupada asked all the, ch the children to give the meaning. Jai Jagannath Baladev Subhadra ki jai, Gornitai ki jai, Lakshmi Nishinga ki jai. So Prabhupada asked the children, he wanted them to know the meaning of everything we're chanting. It's important. Sometimes devotees, we sing the songs, we don't know the meaning. And we chant prayers, we don't know the meaning. Anyway, Om Namo Bhagavate is, I offer my obeisances to Lord Vasudeva, the Personality of Godhead, right? So Lord Vasudeva is being described. The subject matter of the Bhagavatam is actually Lord Krishna, who is Vasudeva. The son of Devaki and Vasudeva. And uh, Prabhupada establishes that Krishna is the Supreme Lord, quoting different scriptures, different acharyas. He mentions Jiva Goswami. Jiva Goswami, the youngest of the six Goswamis, he was the nephew of Rupa and Sanatan. His father had passed away early. So Jiva Goswami wrote the Sandarbhas. He wrote a, treat, a series of books called Sandarbhas and one of them is called Krishna Sandarbha. There's many others, there's several other Sandarbhas and he's discussing different aspects of the Krishna conscious philosophy based on Srimad Bhagavatam particularly. So, Srila Jiva Goswami, in his Krishna Sandarbha, he explains how Lord Krishna is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead. It's not that Vishnu is the Supreme, but it's Lord Krishna is the Supreme. Of course, different sampradayas have different opinions. Just like if you go to the Sri Vaishnavas, the Sri Vaishnavas, meaning the followers of Ramanuja, they they are uh, worshippers of Lord Narayan, and they will not recognize Krishna as being the original supreme. They will say Lord. Narayan, Lord Vishnu is the Supreme and Lord Krishna is avatar of Vishnu, they will say. So different sampradayas have different opinions. And Nimbarka, Nimbarka sampradaya, they, are, they recognize Krishna and also Radha in the Nambarka Sampradaya, they recognize the position of the gopis. So Nambarka Sampradaya is similar to, they have similar belief as we have, some differences also. But uh, general, generally Prabhupada said the four Sampradayas all agree that there's one Supreme Lord and we are all his servants. Who is the Supreme Lord? Is it Vishnu or is it Krishna? There are different opinions and some different sampradayas. You see, we say Krishna is the original Supreme. And we base that on the statement from the Srimad Bhagavatam, 
which comes in the first canto, in the third chapter, where uh, Sutta Goswami is describing about the different avatars of Lord Krishna. And he says, Ete chamsa kalapumsa Krishna's to Bhagavan Swayam. Indriyani bhakalam lokam mritayanti yuge yuge. And that he's saying that uh, Lord Krishna, it is Krishna who is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead. And all others are his incarnations, are his avatars. So particularly in this age, the Krishna who came, the Krishna who came was the Swayam Bhagavan Krishna. That he comes once in a day of Brahma. So very special, the, the personality of Godhead personally comes in this particular. In other ages, there may be a Krishna who is an, ex, an avatar of Vishnu, but the Krishna who came in this age was directly Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna. Was not avatar, but he was avatari. Avatari means he's the source of all the avatars. Everything comes from him. So, of course, different schools of philosophy, they'll have different opinions and not everyone will follow or accept our opinion, but this opinion is established with evidence from the scriptures, particularly from Srila Vyasadeva's writings. Srila Vyasadeva is uh, in our line of disciplic succession and he had confirmed his teaching. He had gone to Himalayas, he had met with Madhvacharya and so uh, we understand everything based on the opinion of the Acharyas, Sadhu, Shastra and Guru. So this Shastra, this Srimad Bhagavatam, this is very important Shastra. And this very first verse was spoken on by Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada for 30 days. He was in Bangladesh at the time. They had established one temple there in Dhaka and Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati had gone there. At that time Bangladesh was a part of India and they had the Gaudiya Mat there and Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati went there and for 30 days he spoke on the first verse. And he said he could have spoken more but there was no more time. So he said every word in Srimad Bhagavatam has so much meaning, is so significant. So he could take each and every word and he would speak about it. Just like this verse begins, Janmadhyasya, Janmadi, Janmadi, meaning creation, sustenance and annihilation, the three phases of time. And uh, Janmadhyasya, uh, the, the Vedanta Sutra also, begins in a similar way. Srila Vyasadeva's Vedanta Sutra also talks about Janmadhyasya, the, the, the creation, the maintenance and the annihilation of this cosmic manifestation. The point is it all comes from Lord Krishna. Everything is coming from Him all the different phases of this material world is all coming from him. And he, he is described there by the words, you can see the word abhijnana uh, uh, swarat, charteshu abhijnana swarat, 
right? Janmadhyasya yato navaya dhitaratas chateshu abhigyana swarat. Abhigyana meaning? It's imp these are important words and Prabhupada also talks about these words in his purport. Abhigyana meaning? Uh, Prabhupada gives the meaning here as fully cognizant and swarat fully independent. Fully cognizant means he knows everything, everything past, everything present and everything in the future. Krishna knows all three phases of time and he is also fully independent. We are independent a little bit. <laughs> we have tiny independence. What is our independence? Our independence is either to surrender to Krishna or surrender to the material world, right? To go to the material world. That is our independence. When we surrender to Krishna, then we are controlled by Krishna. We are under the divine energy. Mahatmanas to mamparta daivim prakritim ashrita. The Mahatmas, Mahatmas means devotees. Prabhupada would refer to the devotees as Mahatmas. And the, those great souls are under the protection of the divine energy, the daivi prakriti, the divine energy. Mahatmanas to mamparta daivi prakriti mashita vajanti ananya manaso gyatva bhuta amiyata. Because they are engaged in devotional service, so they are under the protection of the divine energy. But when we don't take the shelter of Krishna, when we take the shelter of the material energy, then we're under the modes of nature. We're under the three modes of nature. And mostly we're under the mode of rajas and tamas. Little bits of goodness here and there, but much more predominant ignorance and passion. So that's what happens in the material world. You come under the spell of the material energy, the illusory energy. And under the spell of the material energy, we're trying to imitate Krishna. We want to be independent. Hmm? And you can see every bit, it, it happens just like uh, even countries, they want to be independent. Sometimes they're under the rule of another country and they want independence. And sometimes, it, you know, they will be fighting and go on, so on. Like Russia, at one point they had USSR, but now it's all independent countries. And so difficult to keep everything united. People want independence. And even in India, you've got conflicts, parts of India. Kashmir want to be away from India, you know. And you get, you get these kind of situations going on. We want independence. Even in the family, brothers will fight with each other. I want independence, right? And difficult to keep the the family together because people, we have that independent mood. But Krishna, He is supremely independent. He is totally independent. He doesn't depend on anyone. We depend on the world, we depend on Krishna, we depend on the material nature, we cannot do anything ourselves. We are totally dependent. We're dependent on so many things, so many people. 
we depend on the, the, the market to provide vegetables, and you depend on the shops to have all the things you want to purchase, depend on the government to provide school for the children, depend on the government to have hospitals and transport, so many things. We are depending on others, we are dependent. But the person we really need to depend on is Krishna, ultimately. And when Krishna himself, he doesn't depend on anyone. He is fully independent. And he is fully cognizant. He knows everything. In the Bhagavad Gita, you have Arjuna saying to Krishna, how could you speak the knowledge to the sun god? The sun god is so much senior by birth to you. But Lord Krishna says to Arjuna, Bahuni me vyatitani janmani tava charjuna. Tani aham veda sarvani natvam veda parat. Many, many births both you and I have had, O Arjuna. I can remember all of them, but you cannot. That is the difference between us and Krishna. The Krishna is a big yana, he knows everything. We've forgotten, we've forgotten our previous birth. And we can't even remember what we were doing yesterday at this time, what to speak of our previous life. We forget everything so easily. So, Lord Krishna, he doesn't forget. He remembers everything. He is a big yana and he is swarat. He is fully independent. So, in this first verse, Srila Vyasadeva is describing some of the wonderful qualities of the Supreme Absolute Truth. Prabhupada I'd like to describe the personality of Godhead, he would use the term Absolute Truth because he said, if we just speak about God, people think, well, there's so many gods. No, there's China God, there's India God, you know. There's so many, there's the sun god, there's the moon god, there's the rain god, the wind god, there's so many gods. So Prabhupada said, better than God is the absolute truth. Absolute truth, that some, what the truth which is absolute, which never changes. We have experience only of relative truths things which we know are relative. Hmm. It means true, may be true today, but it may not be true tomorrow. Things change, times change. Hmm. So the nature of this material world is subject to change. Everything changes in the course of time. One devotee, he had come to Malaysia uh, in the beginning, he was one of the first devotees to come to Malaysia. It must have been like 1970s he came to Malaysia. So we asked him, has Malaysia changed much? He said, well, can't recognize it. It's so different, everything changes. So like that, I know we had, we had one temple in, it was in BM, Bukit Mertajam. And then uh, we had to move out because they wanted to do some road work and make a, a, a I don't know, they, they were doing some work on the roads. And so anyway, we had to move out of the place. And I went back like a couple of years later and the place is so, so different. I couldn't even figure out where our temple used to be. The whole place had just changed. 
So material world is like that. The bodies change, the world changes, this is temper all everything is so temporary here in this place. So we have to understand these things. Now Krishna uses the word adikavaye, right? Adikavaye. The meaning Kavi means somebody who is very learned, is a scholar, right? So Adi Kavaye is the original scholar, the original person who knows everything. Uh, how is it described here? Uh, Brahmini Brahma. Adi Kavaye, unto the original created being. Prabhupada is just put, unto the original created being. So the original created being, meaning Lord Brahma, the first created being. Lord Brahma. So everyone in the material world, we're all uh, illusioned by this material energy. We know even Lord Brahma becomes illusioned. Although the Vedic knowledge was put into his heart, ten he Brahma ridaya, that means the Vedic knowledge was put into the heart of Lord Brahma at the beginning of the creation. And Adikavaye, that original created being, Muyanti, illusion, right? Prabhupada says, after offering obeisances to Vasudev, then he says, huh? The prime Lord Krishna is described, the primeval cause of all causes of the creation, maintenance and destruction of the universe. So that is Janmadi, the, the cause of the creation. And then he is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations and he is independent because there is no other cause than him. So Prabhupada is talking about this independence and all-knowing feature of the Lord. He is the original cause of everything. So he knows about everything. Just like when you, do, when you put up a building, the architect knows everything. Person who does the work, they know about everything. So the Lord, He is the original source of everything. He knows about everything in this world. And then the verse says, it, it, it is He only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahma, the original living being. So, Tenhe Brahma, Ridaya Adikavaye, the Vedic knowledge is put into the heart of the first being, Lord Brahma. And we, we also, we're in the Brahma Sampradaya, we get our knowledge from Lord Brahma. And then the verses, by him, meaning Lord Krishna, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. Great sages and demigods are placed into illusion by him. We know even Lord Shiva sometimes becomes illusioned, right? Lord Shiva wanted to understand Krishna's maya. And so Krishna appeared in the form of Mohini Murti. And Lord Shiva became mad after Mohini Murti. He was running after. And so, even although Lord Shiva is the greatest Vaishnava, that he also can be illusioned by the Lord. 
And we know Lord Brahma was the illusion, Brahma Vimohan Lila. When Krishna stole away the cow, uh, Brahma had stolen away Krishna's cowherd boyfriends and cows, Krishna took the place. And Brahma came back, he was surprised to see they were all there. So Brahma was illusioned, Indra was illusioned, Indra had become proud and Lord Krishna had to pick up the Govardhan hill to crush the pride of Indra. And then Varuna, the god of the sea, at one point the god of the sea had arrested Nanda Maharaj. So Krishna had to go and get him back from Varuna. And Varuna was apologizing, oh I'm so sorry, I didn't know this was your father, please forgive me, like that. So all of the different great sages and demigods, they can all be illusioned by the energy of Krishna, it's so powerful. <coughs> and the verse says, just as one is bewildered by the illusory representation of water seen in fire. Water seen in fire. Sometimes when you, if it's around fire, fire, you can see water also coming from the fire. The fire, the heat of the fire causes condensation. Or just like land seen on water. So sometimes when people are in the ocean and they just see water, water, then they have the illusion, they think, oh there's land, they think it's land, but it's just an illusion. So the same way people are illusioned in the material world. And the illusion is to think, this world is mine, I am the enjoyer. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Ishwaraham ahambogi siddhoham balavam shuki. I am the controller, I am the Ishwara. Ishwaraham ahambogi, I am the enjoyer. Siddhoham, I am perfect. Balavan, I am strong. Suki, I am happy. So this is the asura thinking like this, you see. What causes us to think like illusion, the illusion of the material energy. Only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the creation of the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. Mm. So, Trisargo Mrisha. Right, that's Trisar Gomrisha talking about the three world, the, the three modes of material nature, the creative faculties. Um, Amrisha, almost factual. So we are thinking the world to be real, it's almost real, but it's temporary. So then the verse says, I therefore meditate upon him. I meditate that Dimahi, I meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally res eternally existent in the transcendental abode which is, however, free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Satyam param dimahi. Satyam param dimahi. I meditate on the satyam param, the supreme absolute truth. Right? This is who we want to meditate on. We meditate on money, we meditate on, you know, so, so many things 
our minds are meditating on. But we want to meditate on the Absolute Truth, the Satyam, Param Satyam or Satyam Param Dimahi. So this is, this is the introduction to this Srimad Bhagavatam. Srila Vyasadeva has composed this verse describing the Supreme Absolute Truth, the nature of the Absolute Truth, how He is above everything. So this, this verse, you can see uh, the Dimahi, this is actually from Gayatri Mantra and uh, it indicates this first verse is like the Gayatri Mantra. Just like Valmiki Ramayana, Valmiki Ramayana, 24,000 slokas and every 1,000 verses he would put a syllable from the Gayatri Mantra. The 24 syllables in the Gayatri Mantra. So he composed Valmiki Ramayana, 24,000 slokas. So every 1,000 slokas would begin with the one of the, the syllable from the Gayatri Mantra. And in this way, his book, Ramayana, is the glorification of Lord Krishna. And Gayatri Mantra is what we met, how we meditate on Lord Krishna through mantra, through the Gayatri Mantra. So this Srimad Bhagavatam is also a meditation on Lord Krishna. You study the Srimad Bhagavatam and one day Prabhupada said just by reading Srimad Bhagavatam, one day you will see Krishna in the pages of the Bhagavatam. Because this Bhagavatam is the sound incarnation of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna in the form of a book. So, Lord Chaitanya was always hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. He would go to Gadarhar Pandit. And Gadahar Pandit would read Srimad Bhagavatam to him every day. And Lord Chaitanya was especially fond. He liked to hear about Prahlad Maharaj and Dhruva Maharaj. People think, oh, we want to hear about Rasalila and the gopis. But Lord Chaitanya was hearing about Prahlad and about Dhruva Maharaj. Okay, any question? Yes, Prabhu? Uh, Maharaj, uh, when you know this Satyaloka and Dhammaloka, is this two different places or uh, same? Same. Same. Satyaloka, Brahmaloka, same. Mm -hmm. You can read about Satyaloka. You can, if you read the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, you can read how Gop Kumar is a cowherd boy from Govardhan and he was given a mantra by his guru and by the power of the mantra he could travel and he went to all the different places. He went everywhere in the universe. He went up to Swargaloka and then he went Janaloka, Mahaloka, Tapaloka, Satyaloka. And tells you what's going on there in these different places. Tells you why he didn't stay there. He went there, but he didn't stay there. He went on. And then he went through the covering of the universe and he went into the, the liberated uh, condition, into the Brahma Jyoti, and then into the Vaikuntha, and then he went to Ayodhya, and Mathura, and, and then he went to Goloka. And then he came back to Vrindavan. So such a loka is the same as Brahma loka. Okay.
Any other question? Yes, we will. Yeah, Krishna will test us, right? Let's see. How, well, great sages, even great sages and demigods are bewildered. How to avoid being illusioned? We have to remain always surrendered to Krishna, always put ourselves in that position of surrendering to Krishna and praying to be engaged in his service. The demigods, because they are a little bit independent, because they are a little bit proud, they get problems sometimes. And sometimes even the great sages, just like Gopkumar went to the heavenly planets and he saw in the heavenly planets, you know, there were some conflicts, there were some arguing going on there. <laughs> so they have these problems. So how to avoid it? We must always remain humble, to be always humble and surrendered. That is, uh, well that humility is the symptom of surrender, one of the symptoms of surrender. Anukobhyasya sankalpa, right? Accepting everything favorable and rejecting everything unfavorable. Knowing that only Krishna is maintaining us and knowing that only Krishna can protect us. Have no desire other than Krishna's desire and always be meek and humble. These are six items, six symptoms of surrender which we should cultivate. Because only by surrender can we overcome the material energy. Daivihi esha gunamayi mama maya durajaya mam eva ye prapajanti maya mitam tarantiti. Material energy is very difficult to overcome. But one who surrenders to me can easily cross beyond it. So if we surrender fully to Krishna, then we will not be illusioned. We take shelter of Krishna. People are illusioned because they forget Krishna, because of forgetfulness and thinking themselves independent of Krishna. So the material energy is very powerful, it is Krishna's energy and we have to recognize the great potency, the great power which is there in Krishna. And so this verse is a nice meditation on Lord Krishna. Well, one reason was Dasarath was vowed to truthfulness. 
and he had given the bones to Kai Ke. And so when Kai Ke came to get the bones, he cannot really refuse because he was, he was vowed to truthfulness. There's a very famous statement in Ramayana. They say, Ragu Kali Rakchaliai Pranjayalun Vachanajai. Better I would die than tell a lie. So Maharaj Dasarath, he, was, he had that kind of mood, you know, he was a, a great soul. He didn't like to, he, of course he didn't like to vanquish Ram, but Kaike took it, she's the favorite wife. She's not crazy. Huh? But she's not crazy. She's not crazy. She's, she's already crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But she's one of the wives. <laughs> she's, she's very powerful. And he was very attached to her. It's a lesson and because he was so much attached to the young wife, the older wives, you know, he was more interested in the young wife and so she took advantage and she wanted, she was told, of course she was tricked by, what's her name? Ma 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 Mantara. Mantara. Yeah. She was, he, she was influenced by Mantara that you should get these bones, your, your son is not going to be properly respected. If he's not the king, he has to be the king. So she got influenced. It's all lila for the, for the pastimes of the Lord. You see, Lord Rama had to go into exile because there were so many Rakshasas. So he had to go there into the forest to, to kill all these Rakshasas. And also his devotees were there. He could give also pleasure. The mission of the Lord, right? To give pleasure to his devotees and annihilate the demons. So Lord Rama had to go there. And all, they were all anxious that he should come there because he was the only one who could kill Ravan. Nobody else could kill Ravan. So Lord Ram had to go there. Okay. All right, so we will stop here. Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki